YouTube. I'm here today with a thrift haul video. Welcome back to Specularia. I'm Cindy and I'm going to share with you thrift haul finds from a couple of weeks ago to last week. Um, so I'll get started. So this is the first thing I wanted to share. This is um, Miss Spider, a 2005 Mattel toy from the Sunny Patch Friends cartoon. Um, she is sort of like in the cartoon if you haven't seen it you should check it out it's extremely cute and charming really great for kids but also i think a lot of adults can appreciate some of the sweet um themes that are in it so she's kind of like the mom figure in the bug community and her slogan is we have to be good to bugs all bugs um, so that's a pretty good message, I think, for society in general. And um, she's really wonderful because she's this very calm personality and she adopts all of the orphan bugs who've lost their parents. And so she's a really sweet character. So this toy is um, a talking toy. It has a battery on the bottom and an on off switch. And she's got some speckles on her back. She's really cool looking. Um, the animation from the cartoon was really interesting. It was sort of like that um bridge like the 90s animation sort of style to the 2000s where it was like a bit of cgi a bit of real life animation um so i'll play her a little bit so there's a little sensor in her hat up here where are my little bugsters where are my little bugsters oh where oh where have my little So that's Miss Spider. She's very sweet. Um, there's some Velcro on the front of these flowers, and I saw that there's actually for all of Where her, are my little bugsters? all of her kids. Let me just turn her off here. So for all of her her kids in the show, there's actually also plush toys that were made. So I'm theorizing that probably they will stick to these, and she can wrap these arms around because they're wired. So maybe that's sort of how she would hold her little family together pretty adorable. Next thing I found was this. Um, this is a Cabbage Patch doll from 1995. Um, she's part of the Fairy Garden series. I don't collect Cabbage Patch dolls, but I had to rescue her because she was um, in the the reuse recycling center and she was just there and i thought she was cute i may end up passing her along or selling her but she's really cute and um she has the little signature on her bottom she is like i said the 19 a 1995 doll so um I, I was looking for information on this doll and it's funny because nowadays when you try to look for, as I research for these toys that I want to talk about in these videos, it's so hard to find just a quick source of information on, on different dolls because the first like 50 links you're going to get will be eBay, Etsy, Amazon, like all these sales links. So like it just really shows me how the internet has changed over the years to be entirely consumer driven and not information driven driven. It's kind of frustrating, <laughs> but I did find an interesting website um, that someone has called My CP sorry, my CPK, Cabbage Patch Kid, my CPK collection dot weebly dot com. And um there she talks about her large Cabbage Patch collection, as well as the history of uh, the creator of Cabbage Patch Kids. Um, his first name is Xavier. I can't remember his last name. It starts with an R. Um, and she talks about the the different colors of the signature markings and what year those were done in and how they were done and the history of um, the companies that have owned the licensing for this brand. And it's pretty interesting stuff to look into if you are a Cabbage Patch collector. Um, 
they're they're really cute dolls. I I have maybe one or two other ones. Uh, some are for they're my daughters, and then I have one of the Cabbage Patch Pet toys. It's the the cat boy. Um, I like the look of those better, and I think that's just because I like anthropomorphic things like animals that look sort of like humans, but the majority of what I collect isn't specifically a human doll. It's more an animal or a fictional creature. So. She's cute. Her wings are like this plastic. It tie this whole dress ties on around her, and she's just a little small doll with these really cute little braids in the back. Next, I have these guys. Um, hold on, I have notes. Fix my notes. Okay, so these are Hello Geeks toys. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them. When I tried to find information about them, it took me to a really sketchy website called romaine.com and um, it sort of looks like it's probably either, it, it, these look like Japanese toys, but they may also be Chinese toy kind of knockoffs. I'm not sure. There's a Facebook page for Hello Geeks, um, but there's not a whole lot there. It's just a fan page. It's not official, but I seriously love these toys. They're really adorable. So the first one is this lion and he is Hello Rao on his bum. Um, the tush tags just say Hello Geeks. Um, oh, and I guess, yeah, romaine.co.kr. So those are Korean toys. I just solved it. Sorry, guys. Um, so these are Korean toys. And then there's this monkey with this banana on top of his head and this little bow tie. And this is Hello Ray. Hello Ray. So they're really cute. I just, I've never seen them before and I came across them and thought I would pick them up because they're very uh, funny. They're flat, funny toys. My next find um, is a 1993 Caboodles toy by um, Toy Biz Inc. This is the shopping mall playset. So it's really cool and it has a lot of nice like stickers. It's like totally, you know, that 90s feeling um, toy or toy, I guess, makeup kit or um, this one's actually a dollhouse. So let me see if I can open this. So when you open it up, you see Caboodles inside cinema. This is an entire shopping mall. So there's Pet Palace and a boutique. And you open it up this way and this way. And um, oh, and the front opens and this opens. And so you have like a stage. Um, there's a concessions popcorn candy stand. Over here we have... Um, what does that say? Barrettes and things. Oh, so it's like a little jewelry store. Um, over here, there's a video arcade. And down here is like the food court of the mall. And um, so yeah, this is the parking lot. So you would use this like a little dollhouse. You could store things inside of it. Um, you could, you know, play with your dolls inside of it. And it's a really cute little jewelry or you know, doll storage box. There's a huge market for caboodles um, from the 80s and 90s. People seem to really like them. This is the first one I've ever found in the wild that was this interesting in a thrift store. So um, I picked it up and I'm really happy that I got it. It's very cute. Okay, so next we have um, this plush toy. This is a Beemore's, Hasbro Beemore's Pink Dinosaur. So the concept with this toy is it was sort of a contemporary to the Popple. It was a short-lived series from 1987 uh, made by Hasbro. And the concept is that you could have two different breeds of dinosaurs by flipping some things here. So first we have this variation. Um, actually, I should make it all the same. Hold on. Okay. This one doesn't really flip down a whole lot, but the concept is basically you have one variation of dinosaur and then with some simple flipping of a few Velcro pieces, you would have 
a different kind of dinosaur. So this one has these flaps that will cover the um, the claws. So it's kind of like you have like a tamer dinosaur and then a scarier dinosaur. So they're pretty cute. I mean, I don't think they have as much charm as the popples did. And so I can see why they didn't last. I think maybe this isn't enough of a feature to make them particularly unique. Um, as a toy that a collector would hold on to, this one has a little bit of sun damage, some color loss, and I think just generally speaking, having this Velcro here, it's going to collect a lot of fuzz and things, so they don't display perfectly, but for the not-so-picky collector, I think they're still really wonderful. Um, so there were actually three variations of these toys, and I have a couple other ones. So the most common one that you see is the gusty version, um, which looks honestly like a dragon. So it sort of sits this direction, but its head comes up more and it, it's more of a, a flat laying doll rather than one standing up. Then there was the um, this one, which is the shaker version. These guys stand up. There were two, um, two variations within th all three of the types of these. So there was the large adult and then a baby. So this is an adult shaker and then there'd be Shaker Jr. who's a smaller, also pink version of the same guy. He only had a back flap though. He didn't have any other features. Um, and the third one is called Gusty, which I've never seen any of them before. Um, they're more in blue tones, whereas the rest of them are yellows and pinks. So these ones were kind of blue and blue green, I believe. But yeah, they're a totally interesting and cool plush toy. Okay, so actually, before I move on to this one, and then I have this just sort of silly little bear puppet that I found. It's a vintage um, teddy bear. It's just like a funny triangle that you put your hand in. It's got this nice flowery vintage fabric. It kind of looks like it could be Fisher Price. Um, it doesn't have any tags and I couldn't find anything when I was Googling, but it's a really cute old little toy that I just thought would be funny. Um, probably I'll give it to my daughter for her puppet theater. Okay. Um, then this doll. So this is a Fruity Village Fruit Baby that was made by LAM Inc. in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So it has a beanbag body and then it has this vintage, you know, very vintage, almost 50s looking head that's made um, from plastic. And so there was a whole entire series of these in all different fruits. And I thought it was pretty cute. It's not my typical collection um, item. It's not, you know, um, something that really fits my aesthetic at all, but I really like it. It's from 19... Um, Oh, I don't have that information. So I can't remember the year this is from, but you can look them up online by looking for Fruity Village, F-R-U-I-T-T-I, -T -T -I, Village Fruit Baby. And there's plenty of them on eBay. Okay, so next I was very excited to find this baby, this Care Bear in such great shape um, because I don't have any of these babies, these original babies. This is 1983 Kenner. This is a baby hugs. Um, originally, th this is the original um, symbol, the belly badge. So this is a star buddy that's emerging from a heart. So this is Hugs. She has a brother who is suspected they're twins because they have the same birthday, but it's never been officially announced. That's been sort of funny pointed out online is that it's not official, but she does have a brother named Tugs and they're always together and they live with Graham's bear. And so that's a little bit about her history. So, um, the new badge that is on this, I believe, uh, yeah, it's 2007 onward. They changed the badge to be a pink heart with a little yellow star in the middle. And it's essentially like the reverse of her twin brother's badge. So she's in great condition. I've already given her a wash. Um, her diaper is really cute. It's got little ties on the side and she's got this little curl and, um, yeah, she's in great condition and I really think she's adorable. I'm trying to cut down on collecting so many Care Bears because I find them relatively often. So I'm trying to stick to just getting the older ones. 
It's hard though. There's so many cute variations of Care Bears. And then this is something I don't collect at all, Precious Moments. Um, so this is a 1988 Precious Moments plush doll and the name is Heaven Scent. Scent is in smell. So you can see she's holding this really cute and very sad looking skunk. So cute. So um, I saw her, she needs to have her hair kind of tamed down a bit, but I saw her for like 50 cents in at her store and I, I, I thought she's really cute and I love the skunk even if I didn't have her I would want the skunk because it's so 80s and I really love it so she's in great shape her tush tag is great she's from applause toys um, which is a big toy manufacturer um, so yeah she's cute okay so the next thing I have for you are these little guys um, they're these little hugging mice and I couldn't find exactly who these babies are. They are like the funniest little mice though. And they're kind of like, I think maybe either a reproduction or potentially even before some other mice that I found online that were made in 1976 by Dakin. Um, the eyes are a little different on the Dakin mice. They're closed and they're blue and they're just pieces of felt that have been um, stuck onto the toy. So these guys are actually much cuter than the Dakin ones. And I actually have rabbits that are very similar to this um, that are these little hugging rabbits. And so they have Velcro hands, so you actually can separate them. But why would you? Because they're so sweet together. So I was really happy to find them and they're in really great condition. Then I have one pony um, this week. She's just a G3 pony and um, she is from 2002. Her name is Frilly Frox. I have already redone her hair and given her a bath so her hair is in great condition. Um, she does have the little masquerade mask as her cutie mark. Let's bring her a little closer so you can see maybe. The light's getting a little funny. Um, and she does have a little bit of ink staining on the back. I haven't um, gone to any crazy chemical solutions yet to try to clean her up. I don't get too emotional about G3 ponies. I mainly try to keep my G1 ponies in very well restored condition. So she's adorable though. Then um, I found this little really cute Olivia um, playset. It's sort of in the same vein as Polly Pocket, but it's Olivia Pig. So let me just try to zoom in a little bit here. Open this back a little. Okay, so that you can see her when I open it. When I open it, so um, this case opens, and there's this little door with a mirror. Then when you open up the drawer in the bottom, the little theater stage pops up and there are these little Olivia Pig characters that you can play with. This one has a hook on the back. I think it probably would hook on the door to help her stand up. Um, there's all sorts of little plastic and cardboard props um, and different pieces of this toy and they all go inside this little box. So. I'm not a big Polly Pocket collector. I don't, um, I don't really need to collect them. I, I see them often in different kinds of auctions and I could collect them if I wanted to, but I don't. Um, I have a couple, um, but I'm not a huge collector, but I did really like this little Olivia Pig set. It's a little bit tricky um, to close. There we go. So yeah, really cute. And the last things I have to share with you are just a few random dolls that I picked up um, from thrift stores. So these are a couple of Equestria Girls and they're My Little Pony Equestria Girls. I got these boots that came with this butterfly doll um, and they're definitely her boots. They're like a light purple. They have the same butterfly pattern 
and they're just like this and somebody took them off of her and I cannot get them back on like it's literally impossible so if anybody knows anything like these do not come off the stall I have no clue how they got her boots off but they will never go back on if anybody knows how to take off and put on the boots of Equestria Girl dolls of this this generation let me know because it's seriously rocket science um, and then we have three, three, I think three Monster High dolls. Um, so these are all Monster High dolls that I picked up, um, at a thrift store. They all came together. They're very cute. I don't know all the information about them, like their names and their characters and all of that. I'm not that deeply into Monster High dolls. I just kind of like how they look. So I have a few in my collection. Um, and then I have this doll. But I'm not sure if she's a Monster High doll or not. She's shorter than they are, so I'm guessing if she is, she's like the teen version. I just really thought she was really beautiful. She's like a mermaid, and she has these really cool ears. She's like a serpent. So if you know who she is, she has sunglasses on her head, um, these little sandals. If you know who she is, let me know. And then I have this one um, sad Lala Loopsie doll that has no clothes, but I thought, oops, <laughs> Ew, excuse me, I thought she was very cute. And so I picked her up and I have to put a dress on her and I like her hair. It's like really cute. And I have a couple of the Lala Loopsie ponies that are sort of a lot like her. So she's really sweet. So thank you again for joining me with this thrift haul video. Um, I try to post at least once a week if I can for now. And um, there will be some changes coming in the future. You'll be seeing more of me on the camera and we'll be changing up the studio for now. I'm continuing to shoot in the library and it's working fine, but I would like to um, work on a couple more video series. So again, I am going on. So have a great day and thank you so much. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to Specularia. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, have a great day. Bye.